Hey everybody, I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today, and before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to the magazine, tell your friends, it's easy, it's free, like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, share, follow, all that stuff that you know how to do with social media. It really helps us out. Please spread the word, help make this community grow. With that being said, I got two really special guests today. I got Taylor Roberts and Ted Ludwig, and we're going to talk about seven string guitar. These guys are both seven string masters. And um, I think it's a cool thing to, you know, shed some light on this whole thing. So my first question is to one of you guys grab it and then the next guy grab it. My first question is, what do you think, Taylor, I'll start with you. What do you think is the current state of the seven string guitar? That's a great question. Um, I think it's, uh... I, what I've noticed anyway, since, since my interest in it peaked was, uh, you know, since 2004, let's, let's, let's talk about back then, because that was when I first saw, uh, Howard Alden play. And he, he is really the one responsible for getting me to convert. Um, and then after reading up on the history of it, you know, George Van Epps obviously was sort of the pioneer of it, at least in the jazz realm. And, you know, that was almost a hundred years ago you know um and uh but then like my guess is my theory anyway is that nobody really followed up after that because nobody could do what he was doing he was just he was such a brilliant player and such a unique voice in, in the guitar world that it kind of fell off but then uh you know bucky pizzarelli sort of from my understanding anyway from my own sort of meandering research is that he sort of picked up the torch uh, his son, John, as well, another fantastic seven string player. And and it's sort of like uh, we're sort of like this special, like a uh, little click of of redheaded stepchildren in the guitar world who play, <laughs> you know, the, these wonky guitars that, you know, most people are used to seeing six strings or 12 strings. But seven strings is like that's probably the most common response I get on my gigs is like, I've never seen a guitar with seven strings. What's what's up with that? It's like eh. and then I go into my whole spiel. But um I, I think it's it's pretty healthy. I, I think despite the fact that it's a relatively small community, um, everybody in that community tends to have a pretty unique and distinct voice. Um, at least people who are, you know, who are out and performing regularly and, uh, you know, full timers like like Ted and myself. Um, we, we've all got something pretty, pretty unique and special to say. Very cool. Ted, what about you, buddy? Well, you know, I I uh, I, I I agree with Taylor on that. Um on, on, I really like what he said. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we're kind of, even though, you know, I mean, we're not like newcomers to jazz guitar. We're kind of like the the new brood of seven string guitar players. You know, you have, uh, you know, of course, you know, George Van, Van Epps and then Bucky really sort of made the seven string a more popular thing, you know. And then, of course, you know, getting the instruments at that time, you know, was was tough because, you know, George Van Epps's instrument was was uh, basically an, an old Epiphone that he had Epi cut the neck off back in the in the late 30s. He had him cut the neck off and reattach a wider neck for his to, to accommodate seven strings. But um, I mean, yes, the, the 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 you know, the pioneers that that I really looked up to were, were guys like, of course, Steve Mazakowski was my teacher in New Orleans and he played seven string. Um, and he started on, on one of the instruments that I'm about to talk about is the Gretsch came out with a seven string George Van Epps signature model. And that, when that came out, it kind of made it a little bit more accessible to, to players. Not that they were plentiful in guitar shops at, at that time, but, you know, so Steve actually started on one of the, the Gretsch, Bucky Pitzer, uh, I'm sorry, the Gretz George Van Epps model uh, guitars. Um, but now, you know, we have, we have, of course, Mazakowski still very active and uh, Ron Eshte uh, is, is a, a great, um, um, you know, seven string player who, who, who lives out on the West coast. And, and he was very influential to me. Of course, Howard Alden, you know, Howard Alden is, uh, you know, some of the stuff he's done is, 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 is a, his accompanying is so great and and uh, his solo playing is, is just so, so beautiful. So, you know, uh, Howard Alden. And then you got, you know, of course, Steve Herberman's a really wonderful seven string player. And um, and and so and then um, that was actually Tom Rebecca who just called uh, and I, I just hung up. But Tom, uh, we're, Taylor and I both play Tom's guitars. Yeah. Um 
And so, uh, but but then, you know, of course, Herb, so Steve Herberman's a wonderful seven string player. And then you got Davey Mooney, who's a who's a great player. And and so, you know, and and to sort of add to what to what Taylor was saying is that the seven string, you know, sort of started as more as an accompaniment accompaniment thing or a solo thing to be able to to have the lower the lower range. But now, you know, I'm seeing you know guys play seven string because they want that option. And, and I tell people, I've had people say this all the time. Well, you know, you know, I, I, I have enough trouble with six. But, you know, the thing is, we have a six string. We just have an extended bass. And if people think of it that way, instead of it like as a whole nother type of instrument, it, it can become more accessible to to uh, to others as well. I, I'm actually uh, typing an invite to Tom to see if he's available. Oh, to, to join us. So I just sent him. An, I just sent him an invite. We'll see if he comes along, since he's yeah. the uh, since he's the builder of both those instruments you guys are playing. Yes, absolutely. So okay, every time you know we, we we talk about this, you know, it's converting from a six string to being a seven string player. Every time I pick up one of those things and I look down at that neck, I get really confused. And then <laughs> if I don't if I don't look down at the neck, I can play it. So it's it's a it's a visual thing for me. Um, and I, I think that that says a lot. So, you know, Taylor, your gig is you play solo guitar a lot. You know, I'd, I'd say about 95 yeah. percent of my gigs. Yeah. So you, are, are solo I, guitar. I, I know you also play, you know, like, you know, single note, you know, type with with jazz quartets and quintets and all of that, which um but you play mostly, mostly that you know the the solo guitar thing. Um, Ted, I, I, every time I see you play, I see you um, more in the trio type thing and quartet type thing. Are you playing as much solo guitar? I, I well I well I did a solo gig last week. I, I do some solo gigs, but but primarily, to be honest with you, since COVID, the seven string has really come in much more handy for me. Uh, I don't play six at all. I, I've always played seven, but I I, I use it. Um, I use it for a lot of introductions, or when I play, I want to play some solo pieces uh, on my gig, or especially duos. And, and ever since uh, COVID, I'm finding that I'm getting hired a lot more for duo things. Like a, like I either do a duet with my wife on violin or with with horn players, and and the seven string really comes in great for that because I can walk bass lines. And and play the chords and, and and so forth and so on. So, do do us a little favor. Uh, I'm going to get both of you guys to play a little bit. I just just made up my mind on that. Can you? Um, I guess you have to turn your thing off there, and we'll we'll be quiet. Can you play a little? Maybe like maybe twelve bars of something um, that you would use as a, or even four bars, whatever. Just like an intro that where the seven string, um, you know, where you show the advantage of having the seven string. Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm going to turn this sound so where we can hear it a little better. Okay. But uh, I might, and you might hear a little echo, but, but uh, basically I, I would use this like if I was playing with, with a, you know, just like, let's say I was playing with a saxophone player and I had to do a gig like that yesterday and, and he called a, a blues. I'm, I, I might, you know, start off like, uh, let me turn this off. So, so instead of just just like comping the chords, you know, I can walk the bass line. Hey, <laughs> so let me, so let me let just me take get, some of the filthy. Me, nice to see you. Let me um, <laughs> let me give you a little the lay of the land since you're joining us just totally impromptu on this thing. All right, if, let me let me hear my let me adjust my volume. I can't hear you. Okay, we well, adjust okay, your good. volume. Can you hear me now? I'm good. Okay, so um, if you're not talking, don't talk because it'll the, the camera <laughs> will. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. But the camera will 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 put you on front and center of the screen. So 
I'll 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 address you if you don't mind. That'll be probably be the easiest thing when when. But I, I want to talk about the guitars and the challenge of building the instruments, and that's why I got you in there. I think it'd be kind of cool since both these guys are playing your instruments. So Taylor, um, so we we just heard um just to bring Tom up to speed, we just heard Ted play a walking bass blues jazz line. Uh, I know that you do a lot of um, pop tunes. Uh, could you, I mean, you're, you know, the one that everybody knows from you is, um, you know, is the, is, I think it's Billy Jean. Could you, Probably. Could you uh, turn your original sound for musicians on? Uh, or, can, or you can't do that, right? I, I so, so Tom, while we got you, cause we don't want to keep you too long. Um, if, if you don't want to hang while we got you, can you, um, can you shine a little bit of light on, your challenges in making a seven string over a six string and what you, you know, uh, how, how that affects the way that you approach building these instruments? Well, it's a complicated question, but I'm delighted to uh, to drop in and, and answer uh, some of the kind, those kinds of questions. I think that the seven for me is a particularly cool is kind of instrument because for a lot of my career, particularly my later career, uh, you know, I've been fascinated with trying to build archtop guitars that have a bass and a mid-range response where the uh, the shape of the instrument doesn't cause so much cancellation, bass cancellation. So you have uh, an harmonically complex uh, ability to hear these notes against each other that don't normally that will don't normally destroy each other. You know, jazz clear cutting sound uh, ability to create these dissonances and whatever. Uh, but since I, I patrol the ba bass realm so much in my life, be, be, I started with the, the sound bubble that became the half link, which is a, a, an asymmetrical arch top, which, you know, has always been, for me, barely an arch top that had a bass and a mid-range response that allowed somebody to, to be able to still have the cutting power of an arch top and the complexity of it because of its real-time nature uh, while still being able to produce an honest to goodness real bass response from the acoustic instrument so the seven is like a curveball coming in and hanging over the plate for me assuming i can still hit those things <laughs> because it lets me work in, in a range that is really complex and so uh but for me i hear guitars like i hear cellos i hear them i've often said that what i hear the way i hear as i described to my wife it's as if i hear fine fabric tearing I, that's what I experience in my ear. So it's like silk or it's like burlap. And, you know, it's always been that way. And she said, well, I think you're on the spectrum. I said, well, I, you know, I'm sure we're all on the spectrum. But but for me, artists like these two incredible guys here, um, you know, are really great to work with because using the, that lower register, you know, it's easy to throw a bass uh, to try to replace the bass player, but it's really both of these guys use the, the the lower end of the spectrum really well so for me um the seven is all about trying to produce an even lower response a cello like response in an instrument that is has been sort of societally cast into a symmetric bell that destroys the bass and so for, for me this is you know this is like a christmas now because these guys kind of patrol two different parts of the waterfront but their their circles are right over each other you know so all the stuff i've done with jack cassidy is about this the whole halfling nightmare that i've been through for many years <laughs> there's a lot of those guitars all over the planet now and you know it's it's rare to have something that succeeds at all which is different and so to me that bespeaks of a of a the kind of player today who is so much more versatile than we were back in my day uh you know they've been youtubed to the point where you have brilliant players playing every kind of so the arch top has now become this multi-purpose tool. And with that, I'll shut up. <laughs> Does that no, make I, sense? No, I, 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 I love it. I think that's, I think that's really good. Um, I, you know, I spent a 30 years in the pro audio career, so I actually understood what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, you would, you would know, you know, it's, it's, uh... <laughs> so, yeah, no, that, that's, that's, that's really, um, really fascinating. Um, while we got you, Taylor and Ted, one at a time. Would you show off those instruments? Can you put those in, up in front of your camera? Sure. Who do you yeah. want to go first? Well, Ted, why don't you go ahead? You're you're ready to go. Okay. So so oh, uh, first of all, I, I do want to say that Tom is one of the foremost makers of of not just seven string guitars, but 
like one of the greatest, you know, jazz guitar, archtop guitar makers in the world. And, and so if you are, are ever considering a guitar, whether it be six or seven, look no further than Tom Rebecca. He He's one of the, the finest people I know and, and builds some of the finest instruments I've ever played. So um, this is this is a um, uh, Rebecca Monterey custom. It has it's, I call her Buttercup because she's got this. It, she's got a California poppy inlaid in the headstock, and I looked at that and I said I was trying to figure out a name for her and, and the color is that you know kind of a buttery color. And I said in the South that's not a California poppy. In the South that's a Buttercup, <laughs> and so so I named her Buttercup. And uh, so, so this is Buttercup. She has a beautiful um, uh, European spruce top, and she's got the modern style F holes. Uh, Tom's uh, what we call the A hole design. No, no pun intended. And 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 she has the, the this this Kasha style bridge that brings out more of that bass response that Tom was talking about. How to really get the instrument to have those rich basses, and that's and that's what this helps to also do. Of course. You know, when we get back to Tom, he could he could maybe talk about the science about it, and and then of course she has a beautiful flamed myrtle wood back, and and I don't know if it's hard to see on the camera, but it's it's just like super flamey. Uh, of course, uh, the koa bindings on the sides, uh, on on the fingerboard, and in the uh, in the sound hole, and then I always love the way Tom treats the rear head veneer too. He puts a mm -hmm. beautiful volute sort of uh effect with the with the rear head veneer Beautiful. and and this one has a this actually has a a, a uh even though it does have some flames it's got a uh like a bird's eye maple neck and, and it's and, and this is like one of the guitars i use the most i use this guitar all the time um and and it's uh it's really just just incredible instrument that's, that's it's stunning it really is a stunning uh taylor what do you what do you got in your hands there pro What's oh, on? this is uh, uh, funny. You should ask. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I actually spoke with Ted, and I, and I got to tip, tip my hat to to my good friend Ted over there because he sort of steered me in the direction of 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 Tom and his work, and and I had always admired Tom's work from afar, um, and he pretty much, you know, he 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 tipped the scale, in, in, so to speak, for me, and. Uh, and so Tom would be your guy. I mean, considering my style, considering the, you know, the, what we were talking about, the majority of my gigs are solo. I go for a more sort of orchestral sound. And, um, and so Tom, I mean, you know, the first, first conversation I had with him, I was like, man, I love this guy. He's from outer space. He's definitely going to be, building, he's, he's definitely going to be building the guitar for me. I, I would love to work with him on one. And so, uh, it was close to a year. The project that that um, Coco is her name. Uh, my my girlfriend Kayla. So uh, uh, pretty much immediately named her that just due to the finish. It's this rich sort of chocolatey, you know, reddish brown sort of burgundy color. And uh, mm -hmm. like Tom's, it's uh, it, or I'm I'm sorry, like Ted's, it's it's also a Monterey model. Uh, it's it's got a 17 inch lower bout, uh, three inch depth. And uh, it's, you know, it's got the Koa binding as well. And I don't know how close up you can see. Uh, we can see this, it pretty well. This triple binding right here, yeah. too. I mean, he back didn't. Off, he back didn't... off a little bit. There you go. Okay. Well, he didn't skimp at all on the on the details and the aesthetics no. of this thing. I mean, no. it's just gorgeous. I find myself just staring at it, you know, <laughs> on, on end uh, without even playing it. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, um, let's see, it's got a floating Kent Armstrong pickup with the adjustable pole pieces, um, this beautiful ebony fingerboard. I don't know. I mean, wh whenever I tell people about this guitar, I was like, do you, would you like to check it out? They're like, no, 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 I'm afraid I'm going to break it. But it's like, no, just, just rub your fingers across this <laughs> fingerboard and just, it's so smooth. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I don't know what it is about. Oh, I got, um, a, li I got a line but, uh, there, but I'm not going to use it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll gloss over that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but no, just to give you an idea of how uh, bespoke, I guess you can say this guitar was, I mean, Tom did a really deep dive on my YouTube channel and, mm -hmm. and on my playing. And he explained to me how, you know, guitar players also like horn players, they have an armature as well. They have a way that they hold, and position their hands and, and a certain attack. And what he did was he actually voiced the top of this guitar. He thinned the top so it would 
boost certain frequencies to really sort of cater to my style of playing. So this is very much a custom instrument, if, if you ask me. Right. And so when it arrived at my doorstep a day early, I have to say, uh, it was like, it was like Christmas <laughs> a day early. Um, right. you know, I had, a, yeah, right. I had a, I had a gig that night. I, I got to tell you guys, I spent no more than 20 minutes with this guitar. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm taking this one to work tonight. This is the one I'm playing. And the rest is history, man. It's been just, just, uh, a, a salacious love affair ever since. And, uh, and I, I have to say, this is just e easily the finest guitar I've ever owned and ever played. And I mean, this is only let's see i guess i got it in mid-december it's now beginning of may it hasn't even been six months i can only imagine how well this instrument will age over the next several years and how much closer the bond is going to be between myself and the instrument but anyway all that said uh i i have a i have a lot of gratitude for ted and 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 just endless gratitude for tom that i i, I don't know if i'll ever be able to uh you know repay <laughs> well I, so. I you know that's a the, we got the tom rebecca love fest going on right yeah now, which, <laughs> which, which is deserved which is deserved well, I got I, I, i've got i've got a question <laughs> to, for taylor uh, uh, are you ready for number two <laughs> number two oh man i don't know I, I don't know if i can if i can handle that much awesomeness in in one <laughs> decade Let me get back, to be let's get let's get back let's get back to tom for a, a couple minutes um because we don't want to make this thing too long otherwise no one will watch it you know how that goes <laughs> yeah, um me. yeah so tom uh we started out the conversation as as to the um the state of seven string guitar mm -hmm. um you know and I, where I kind of wanted to go with that is, are there a lot of players? Is there a lot of demand for the instrument? Is it getting more popular? Is it status quo? Uh, you know, who are the people that are playing it? Um, you know, why are they moving to seven? You know, all all those kinds of issues. So, hmm. in the people that are coming to you for instruments, um, what would be your response to if someone's? I'm going to ask you the question. You know, what is your response to? What do you think the um, state of the seven string guitar is right now in the world i mean where do you where do you think it falls is it is it growing is it big is it small is it um you know who plays it i mean what can you from your point of view when you're you're the guy i mean you got two of the best players in the world on seven string guitars and you're playing your instruments well that's really kind uh it's, it, this is a wonderful thing to just have been sitting there and uh getting uh, called in to do so thanks for the invitation you know i uh the whole seven thing, thing, string thing for me um, has been fascinating. You know, and I, I watched, I think I'm not really one of those guys who's on top of the jazz world in every sense. Of, uh, I'm very busy with a lot of other things in my life, as well as I'm a player and I play more rock and blues and do all that kind of stuff, do a lot of singing. So I'm really, I'm not a guy who who's, knows about every corner of the jazz world. I would have to say that. But uh, the seven string uh, to me is uh, really a growing in interest now, and it's for, for several reasons. I, I remember back when Jimmy Bruno was playing seven, <clears throat> and Jimmy was spectacular, you know. And Jimmy, of course, is always spectacular, and of course, he's also Jimmy too, which is like dinner in a movie. Who doesn't love Jimmy? But he used to, I used to listen to him play the seven, and I would just laugh, you know. He was so spectacularly beautifully melodic and lyric, and hysterically played like he is, you know. Uh, yeah. To me, when he stopped playing the seven as much, I, I noticed a dip in me and everybody's overall interest in the seven. I had a number of people during that period of time who commissioned seven string guitars and I would make these guitars. And sometimes people would call me a couple of years later and say, well, you know what? I've been trying to play this seven and it, it you know, it, it's, it's really not going to work out for me. It's just too much of a, an adventure. And then I would, uh, take those instruments back and make, I would make them knowing that I might want to switch the neck and put, a that reminds me of a very bad joke, but switch the neck and and put it back, uh, you know, to a six. And I've done that a few times, you know. So there are some sevens out there that I've built that have just been sort of idling for a long time. Uh, I think with the advent of Ted in the marketplace recently, particularly because of his um, his personality, which is you know uh, as large as his playing, you know, truthfully, and I think most of us who know Ted will come to love him. His character uh, is, is larger than life, uh, but he's also a phenomenally brilliant player. <clears throat> and he does the same sort of things to me that uh, that Jimmy would do. I'd listen to him play and I'd go, you know, that kind of thing. 
Mm-hmm. So my sense of it, but you know, I, I could. It's a dialogue. He's talking when he's playing. So, to me, the the, the seventh string hangs on a couple of always to me in the, in this country, not so much in Brazil where the seventh string seems to be fantastically popular, and particularly the and that's I built a seventh string nylon uh, instrument which is almost off the launch pad now, waiting for the pickups. When that gets here, I think it's one of the best I've ever built. But that with a, a little bubble in the top and the treble side, so it's got a little lens, uh, kind of treble lens. You know, this kind of thing is fascinating. But I think the seven in the, in the states here, how many people can really, really play the seven and actually have a make a living doing it? I think that's a limited number of people because it's a complicated thing. So when I see players like uh, these two guys, and and particularly, you know, uh, 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 Ted is, uh, you know, I think he's otherworldly when he plays. Taylor is also otherworldly when he plays and because of he covers a whole other sort of section of the waterfront because he does so many solo gigs that people are really open their ears open up to jazz and pop together you know that's a kind of a uh, to me that's a keyhole to get people to open up and listen to the stuff you know because as all the great musicians i've ever known have said to me between jazz and you know the probably vegas says to me it's music man it's not just jazz it's music you know so for me but you have you have to think that people are out there watching and trying to be these guys as players, and so you know to to me uh, the seven hangs to me on a, on a few key players and um, you know Steve uh, Her- Herberman is an incredibly great player you know there are there are, there are uh, uh, I can't even name these guys because I'll leave somebody out <laughs> you know who's not sitting in front of me I'm recovering from nine innings yesterday in the outfield in the blustery wind I can barely think straight today to be honest I'm so sore uh, but um, the, the reality of it is, is that I think the seven does hang on popular culture and who's playing it. But, you know, I think that it's a coming thing. And so um, I think we'll see more and more sevens. And I think now that I've been playing the bloody seven so much, I want to start making seven string steel string guitars because that's a real niche. I think that nobody's really doing. And I think that there that's an incredible instrument. You know, uh, once you learn what the seven will do, I'm not a player of that caliber, but, you know, I know enough, I am enough of a player to understand what it will do. And so, you know, I think the seven is, is growing in popularity, but I, I can't give you uh, database answers about uh, what I think sales are for everybody. You know, you might ask Howard Paul the same question because, you know, Howard is uh, on top of a lot of those kinds of trends in a larger way. I'm kind of more of a niche marketer. You know, I, I have this, this bizarre, world that I've created that I get to play in every day, you know, which is really lucky, <laughs> you know, so that's my perspective on it. I don't know if that answers your question. No, but... that, that's that's a good answer. I mean, Howard, obviously Howard with Benedetto is uh, a, a good friend of ours. He's a, a, a he's one Wonderful. of our, yeah, he's one of our key advertisers and supporters, and we really appreciate that more than ever. <laughs> we, we love what they do down there and, and all of that. So, um, so yeah, I, uh, well, I have this conversation with Howard. I'll have I, I'll have it with him again. Um, but anyway, getting back to to you yeah. and what you do and um, and all of that, um, I think that was a great answer. Actually, um, I, I I really do. Here's here's a point I want to make before we close this up. That from my perspective, you know, just you know, whatever that for whatever that's worth. You know, people will say, "Well, you're taking you're taking business, you're taking jobs away from a bass player." I don't see it that way. I, I see, you know, you got to, you're, you're, you're turning like you got to, if you got guys playing a solo piano gig, that's a gig, but you, we see guys playing piano bass, you know, and, and, and the, you know, the, the, the uh, there's no question about it. The piano can reach down into some pretty low notes, you know, big, big piano. So I just see it as offering people that want to take on the challenge, um, you know, more opportunities for employment more opportunities for gigs. I mean, Taylor's a, a case in point. Um, you know, Ted's a case in point. I mean, that it gives them more range, uh, more opportunities to do more things. It, you know, a, a, a gig, I mean, uh, a seven string gig with a saxophone and him walking the baseline. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I love you, Ted, you know, I love you, but I mean, Ray Brown on bass would be a little different than you playing that on your, on, you know, and I think you would, would say that and having a real, you know, a real bass player, if you will, is different than you playing those notes. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but, you know, a lot of times, and, and I don't know, I mean, I mean, every city's different, but 
you know, there are times when the bass player is booked, you know, and so like, you know, you, you get, you get, uh, you get gigs, you know, just like, you know, me and, or just two guitar players. In fact, Taylor and I, uh, and, and, and Tom, Tom, Tom Taylor and I are, are planning, uh, for for Taylor and I to do a concert out by Tom's uh, uh, at, at the Du Rascali Vineyards in uh, July uh, for us to actually do a concert and 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 it's great to have two seven string guitar players absolutely to, you know add so much to that but but yes I mean it re remember it, it it is a six string with the extended bass so it just right. gives us more possibilities. And Tom's instruments are literally like Steinway pianos to play. So just to have that extra range and that the extra ability to do that is just really beautiful. Absolutely. And I think it's something that I, I'm um I'm hoping that this video will inspire some some people to say, hey, you know what? I I want to do that. You know, I want to do that. And and uh, you know, and I think that's what this is all about. We want to expand that community, you know, we want to expand uh, all these things that are going on with the guitar and Specifically, you know, as fine an art as what you guys are, are doing with these seven string instruments. And then Tom, to have you here today, the guy that's, you know, building these incredible instruments, like it's like having Mr. Bosendorfer in the room, you know, it's it's, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> anyway, I, I think we'll, you know, it's, it, is there anything closing that either one of you or any of you would like to say before we wrap this up? One thing I would really like to say real quick, and uh, this is just to echo sentiments that, that, that Bucky used to, to pass on to, you know, his, his protégés and potential seven stringers out there is I would challenge anybody who plays a normal guitar, if you will, a six string guitar to uh, grab a seven string, spend a couple of weeks playing only the seven string. And uh, I, I would be hard pressed to find anybody who doesn't want to convert you know well there um, you go from so that's you know, that's my that's my sales pitch <laughs> words words out of the great bucky uh pizzarelli by the way his son john is on our, our cover right now so uh ted you got anything you want to close out yeah i mean I, I i agree i agree wholeheartedly and 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 the first time you pick up the seven just don't look down. <laughs> just don't look down. Put put the six string under the bed and, and oh. the case, and and just don't look down for a little bit. And if you just start playing and feeling yourself around the fingerboard, you'll start playing it like a six. And then as you get comfortable with feeling the, the extra width and kind of seeing that that's not your low E string, because that's the big one. When you first try, you know, your first time you pick up a seven, you go. Oh, here, and they grab it, and you go, oh, wait a minute. That ain't the E string, you know? So, I but, think you gave me that piece of advice at the Rocky Mountain Archtop Festival. I was out don't there. Don't look down. And I, I'm sitting there trying to play this thing. I was totally confused. You <laughs> told me, don't look down. And I didn't. And I was, like, playing. And you know what yeah. happened? As soon as I looked down, I lost it. I totally lost <laughs> it. So you cannot look down when you're, when you're doing this. Absolutely. And because... If you, I mean, you know, when you're playing on a gig, I mean, you pick up a, I don't have a seven string here, but you pick up a guitar, you know, and you're, you know, you're up, you're, you know, you're not, I'm not looking at the guitar when I'm playing, you know, it, it, I'm just playing. Um, and so, I mean, I don't, I don't, I never look down, but when I pick up the seven string, what the, what, why am I looking down? What, what, what am I looking down for? It's crazy. So I, that's a great piece of advice. Grab the guitar, play it for a couple of weeks. Don't look down. <laughs> Tom, what do you got to say? Anything you like to? Well, it makes me think. It makes me think of the chapter I got to write in Larry Robinson, the inlay artist book about creativity, uh, and uh, you know, my chapter ended with uh, I said about creativity and uh, living a life of creativity. The big secret is the coyote and the roadrunner. Just don't look down. <laughs> and that is, you know, I think that's great advice for anyone who uh, really wants to put a wrinkle in this in the uh, in the cosmos of the arts. So. Yeah, it's been really fun to do this today. Thanks for the invitation. Hey, thank. Uh, listen, guys, uh, Bob Baker for Jazz Guitar Today with Taylor Roberts, Ted Ludwig, and Tom Rebecca. I, I mean, what a what a crow. I, I'm so grateful that you guys are all uh, willing and able uh, to, to come on. And Tom, especially to you, because we literally just picked you up, you know. Uh, I, Ted said, hey, that's Tom on the phone. I went, whoa. Uh, you know, I had your number, so I just I sent you the invite and Man, thank you so much for joining us today. That's a that's a, a extra special thrill. I wish we were in my shop, but this is my uh, disheveled office because there was no time and there was a lot of sewing going on in there. So anyway, great. Thank you. No, we're going to do that another time. We're going to do a little tour, if you don't mind. I'd like to do a little tour of, of you know, a virtual tour of, of the shop. That'd be really cool. 
So Bob Baker for Jazz Guitar Today. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys so much. You know, keep doing it. Keep inspiring people out there. You know, I love what you guys do. Thank you. Thank Have a you. great day. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.